Welcome back, everybody. And today I am joined by my esteemed colleague, Only Fan Cow. Hello, everyone from Canada. Today we're going to take you on a little adventure and show you and teach you all about the wings and the wing tanks. By the end of this video, you're going to appreciate wings a lot more. Trust me. Just to get the simplistic factor out of the way, the wings of an aircraft are the fuel tank. That's right. If you didn't know this already, that's what it is. The wings are the fuel tank. But there's a lot more inside there than you think. There's a variety of architecture and baffling, fuel sensors, all sorts of fun stuff. We even got the opportunity to take a look at inside of a fuel tank and you're gonna see how complex it is. Without further ado, let's get at it. The first thing we're gonna talk about is the fuel panels. Fuel panels are usually composed of a fuel panel including a gasket, a ring, screws, and a mesh for bonding. These panels also serve as protection, hence why they're known as impact resistant doors. They also serve as an access point to get inside the tank. Fuel is not only used for the engine, it's also used for cooling. It could be used for trimming the airplane in flight and a lot of other components. If we need to access a certain portion of the wing to change out a component or do an inspection, that's why they're all across the wing like that. Up next, the little red dot that you saw right there, that actually is a component. This is for your fuel stick. This is a way to manually measure how much fuel there is in the tank. These are magnetic fuel sticks with a float. In case the aircraft fuel quantity indicators are going inoperative or malfunctioning, we as maintenance can perform a manual fuel reading. On the older generation airplane, you could also find drip stick instead of dipstick. By moving the drip stick in and out, you could see the level of fuel depending if it was dripping or not. Here's a perfect example of it. The aircraft fuel indication system was inoperative and we had to make sure to measure the fuel tank values within the right tank. As you can see, the little probe is slowly moving up as they are fueling it. We take the aircraft's pitch and roll and we utilize manuals to get the specific amount of fuel that is inside the tank. Once we have the desired amount, we will tell the fueling personnel to stop fueling. All of this is done according to maintenance manuals. Up next, we have fuel tank sensors. To be more exact, fuel probes. These are the things that actually measure the quantity of fuel within the tank. This ties into the computer system, which is the FQI, the fuel quantity indicating system. These components are scattered all throughout the wing. There are a variety of fuel probe designs, but the most common ones are capacitance type. The capacitance value of the probe changes in proportion to the depth of fuel inside the tank. When the probe is dry, the capacitance value is low, but as fuel moves up to the probe, the capacitance value increases. There's also densiometers within the fuel tank that measure the density of the fuel. As you can see, the fuel tank is not just simply a fuel tank. There's a lot more that goes into it. Up next, fuel sumping. Yes, fuel sumping is very important. This is what we do as maintenance to make sure there is no water within the fuel tank. Sometimes water or condensation does build up inside of the tank. Since the density of water is much higher than the jet A or jet fuel, it will always drop down below the jet A. This is why we have these little ports right here at the most lowest portion of the tank. So we as maintenance can go up there and sump the tank. This prevents corrosion as well as prevents any kind of biological growth within the tank. Be careful if you have to replace one probe. Always read your AMM because they all have their friend land and different location. If you're living in LAX like Stig, Lucky you, you can drip fuel at any time. But if you're from Canada like me or in the northern weather, always check your outside air temperature. You cannot just sum the fuel at any time because there's a risk of the sumping drain freezing and you can create a mess of fuel on the ramp. One other thing you have to remember is that this fuel is very cold, especially with aircraft flying at altitude. Take a look at this wing, it's ice cold. Some aircraft such as the 777 even have heat exchangers that are within the tank itself. Other aircraft have them outside of the tank. They are either fuel cooled oil coolers or hydraulic oil coolers. One system helps the other system out. Very cold fuel allows hot oil or hot hydraulic fluid to cool down and the hot fluids allow the cold fuel to warm up, but they don't intermix. If you're working inside the hangar doing testing, with hydraulic system, always ensure you have the minimum quantity of fuel required as per the AMM. For example, on the 737, you need at least 3,000 pounds of fuel for doing hydraulic testing for the proper cooling. Up next, we also have fueling ports. 
Some aircraft have the capacity to fuel only from one side of the wing. Some aircraft can fuel from both wings. The fuel panels designate all the information that is needed, such as fuel quantity and pre-selecting fuel that is being pumped into the aircraft. Up next, we have another function that the fuel tank can perform, which is fuel jettisoning. Not all aircraft have this ability. Mostly wide body aircraft do. The ones we're looking at right here is a 777. That little probe right there or the pipe is where the fuel will come out when they need to jettison fuel. Let's go take a look at the panel within the flight deck. Pilots have the capability of selecting how much fuel they want left on board. They will arm the system, select how much fuel they don't want anymore or how much do remain, then engage the nozzles. This will start dumping fuel. Now, why do you need this, you ask? Just in case of emergency, if there needs to be an emergency landing and the aircraft is full of fuel, they can select this option to prevent a overweight landing. I'm sure everybody remembers the incident with Delta that they had to dump fuel overboard and they happened to be over a city. It's unfortunate, but you know what? It was an emergency. 99% of the time, they will dump it over the ocean. But in an emergency, you got to do what you got to do. And this is what it looks like when you dump fuel. Quite impressive, isn't it? That's a lot of fuel being dumped. And it happens very quickly. Up next, we got fuel pumps. Let's talk about fuel pumps. These are very important. They create a positive pressure to feed the fuel to the engines. Most major airlines or major carriers have at least dual fuel pumps, two per tank. This is a redundant system. Here's the very beautiful part about this. Even if you don't have fuel pumps, let's say your fuel pumps go inoperative and stop working. The way the wing is designed and the way the engine is placed, it will still feed fuel to the engine via gravity. That's right. The fuel will always flow to the engine no matter what. The pumps are there only to provide a positive pressure. So rest assured, even if the fuel pumps die out, you're still going to fly. The engines are still going to keep running. They also have the capacity to cross feed. Cross feeding as in from one tank to the other on certain aircraft and also cross feeding from one tank to one engine and from one tank to the other engine. Very important. This is again another level of redundancy. The fuel is also used to trim the airplane, like on the A330, you can use the fuel from the THS to balance. You can use the fuel to trim the airplane while at takeoff. It's also used at climb and when the fuel is not needed anymore, it returns to the center tank. The 787 is also very special where it can actually self-balance fuel within itself. A simple push of a button, technology is beautiful. Another very important component of fuel tanks is again a level of protection, surge tanks. We don't want that fuel to be surging or cavitating within the tank. That will cause damage to the structure. And in modern day and age, aircraft also getting pumped with nitrogen within the tank. We don't want any kind of fumes getting built up. We call that the NGS, the nitrogen generating system. Most aircraft have them within their center fuel tank and some have them on their wing tanks. But here is the most fun part, and I'm going to use this airplane to show it to you. The lovely, beautiful A330. And guess what? Courtesy of only Fankow, he is going to take us inside of the fuel tank, the center fuel tank of the A330. Let's go check it out. Just a heads up to everybody before anybody gets panicked or nervous, every precaution has been taken. So to enter inside the A330 fuel tank, you must access it from the main wheel well. Inside, you have two small access panels to get inside the fuel tank. Inside the center fuel tank, you can see a bunch of braces made of carbon fiber. Here, you're inside the wing fuel tank. It's a bit smaller, but there's plenty of space to work in. If you're claustrophobic, this is not the job for you. This is very confined spaces, but you have professionals like this that do the job. And we come up on another component of the fuel tank that is vital, baffling. You see, when I say fuel tank, it's not just big empty space inside. They are partitioned. The reason it's partitioned is because you don't want sloshing of the fuel. I'll give you a good example. Fill up a big tub of water and walk around with it and make sure to walk left to right. Tell me what happens to that water inside that big tub of yours. I guarantee you're going to spill it. Now put some baffling in there and also put vent ways or hole ways where the fuel or water can go back and forth. Guess what? No more sloshing. You also have structural support beams. These wings are massive, especially on the A330. You need structural support. One thing to remind you, fuel tanks are pressurized. Not to the level of pressure at the cabin, but they're still pressurized. Here we have a gas detector. 
It's looking at the oxygen level of the fuel tank. We are looking at the LEL, the lower explosion limit, the CO for carbon monoxide, H2S for hydrogen sulfide, and the VOC for volatile organic compound. If you have a lot of VOC in your fuel tank, you must wear a mask and the proper equipment to go inside. They also use specialized equipment, tooling that is spark proof. The technicians that are doing fuel tank diving are very specialized. They get very precise training just to do this. Safety is at number one concern right here. Well, that's about it, folks. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Now you will never look at an aircraft wing the same again. I told you. Thank you, Stick, for the invitation. It was a pleasure to work with you on this video. A big thank you to Only Fan Cal. You're amazing. Keep up the amazing work over there. I hope you guys enjoy this. I will see you guys on the next one. Later.